Everybody, good morning. ジェルメチビテウェテンデシノレラデンダニバテリンサムシニエカジラナムゲロタタセデサムネキテンチャワゴトンバチャワシントトネテンコントニボレンバクネジョンレジャンヤムネテラジェハデチジャンデチジャン
speaking of the why it's extremely rare to achieve such an existence is because the cost to fulfill it's extremely difficult uh, at it says uh, at it says that to achieve such a human state one must fulfill the uh, or uphold the pure uh, moralities mm -hmm. so as i'm sure all of us know that the difficulty of really upholding the pure moral conduct in our life mm -hmm. So I'm just giving you a small uh, examples, uh, examples for the difficulty of obtaining uh, uh, higher migrations. Mm -hmm. So, so it's not only very rare to obtain such state of existence. But it is also very fragile. It can be perished. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So there are many reasons that it's supposed that the fragility of our existence it can be perished. Uh, yeah, yeah, in the mo in instant days, there are, there are many reasons, but but the prime reason is the moment we came into existence is the is the same the moment it starts to decay or starts to perish. Mm -hmm. So during uh, uh, last uh, uh, last Sunday we talk about uh, um, the uh, according to the numbering uh, text, the nine reasoning of uh, impermanence. So here uh, refers to nine reasoning of impermanence. Here refers to we all know that re we all know that uh, uh, that is certain, uh, and and it's it it it's supposed the three reasons that why that is certain. Then the next point is uncertainty of time of the death even even though we know that is a certain but we we are we we don't know the time of a death so it's supposed the three reasons the uncertainty of the time and third point is when the actual death comes the only uh virtuous deeds that we have accumulated is helpful and for that it's supposed the three reasons so in other words, this cycle of meditation we call nine reasoning for uh, reflection on impermanence. <laughs> So we will not go detail on the nine reasonings here for today's sessions. Now the most important thing here is like the the quotations that, uh, earlier we just spoke about. So we must all feel that how fortunate we are to have this precious human body that we have right now. Uh, so at the same time, we also feel that if we 
since we have this precious human bodies, which is so extremely precious and rare, however, if we fail to utilize it now, then the very nature of this existence, it's very fragile, it's just like the lightning uh, in the sky, very instant, it can be perished in very instant, instinct. Therefore, we all must utilize and do not waste this precious human body that we have right now. Otherwise, the nature of our existence is uh, momentarily changing. Now, like if we we have to think this way, like uh, since this precious human body that we have now, it's extremely rare and precious, and it it has the immense potential, so that it if we utilize properly, it will not only fulfill the wishes of this life, but it can it has a potential to achieve a higher migration, to achieve a liberation, even the Buddhahood. Therefore, like uh, therefore, if if we just like using this precious human body just to fulfill the very mundane existence of interest of this life, is to some extent we are wasting the full potential of our existence. Mondo <laughs> So the here the most uh, uh, most important thing for here is like uh, we have to understand that uh, as everybody uh, understands that we just we uh, uh, at the very young age we do, we 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 did the schooling and then then further education then go to job when we get a job what we do is to secure the interests of this life we go to work and then the money that we got we deposit in the bank the means means this. Uh, uh, it, it putting deposit the money in the bank is just in other words securing the comfort of this life, right? That we hope. But at the same time, not just we shouldn't confine the resources within the interest of this life, but the, in the same way we should cultivate our virtuous deeds and deposit in a virtuous bank that that not only it fulfills but it also fulfills the interest of the future and beyond. Mm. Mm. So like the, the, the maximum age, like in general speaking, we can live in this life is let's say 100 years. And it doesn't matter how much money you have deposited in the bank. Like, but at the, then we cannot, when the actual debt comes, we have to leave everything behind. We cannot take even a penny with us. That's the reality. However, if we balance our 
conventional life with our spiritual life and at therefore we uh, we cultivate the virtuous deeds and uh, uh, deposit in in the spiritual bank for the future life then that's something we can take with us mm -hmm. で、ちょやたん、当時当時当時 Jigging so like uh, here the uh the uh well important thing here uh yeah we're trying to make here point is of course like uh, as a uh a, a, a practitioner in this time of uh in, in this time uh we have to also like uh fulfill uh um uh, convention uh, how to say could fulfill uh uh ordinary life right we have responsibility to take care of family and the loved ones and lots of commitments to fulfill therefore of course you you have to do your regular job nine to five uh at the same time we have to try our best to to harmonize with our uh, mundane work with our spiritual work uh, because that's a very important because at the time of the when the death comes as we know like uh, we cannot I mean, doesn't matter what what we have uh, uh, achieved in a, a mundane world, cannot bring anything except the spiritual, the virtuous deeds. So therefore, it's really important to balance uh, ba balance the spiritual or practice with the mundane uh, activities. And the important thing is the the more you put at the structure of uh, putting uh, virtuous deeds in a spiritual practice, it's helpful to begin with the small steps, something that you're comfortable, and gradually it will increase the capacity of your spiritual practice. And and uh, and therefore, like uh, therefore, by doing so, it develops a good uh, familiarization within ourselves to implementing a spiritual practice. Uh, and if we if we formulate in the balancing of the spiritual practice with the uh, mundane uh, activities, when actual death comes, then there's no there's there's no room for regret or remorse that, uh, 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 like uh, just uh, at the death death actual death comes, one will embrace the time of death because uh, I live my uh, life in the fullest form. I have, I have fulfilled all the promises and took, took all the responsibility best of my ability. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I have also uh, uphold the uh, spiritual practice that will uh, that that will enhance my uh, potential to achieve uh, Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings in the uh, in in the future. So. Uh, so in this manner, like uh, did this one is being able to like uh, utilizing the at least the the innate 
potential of our existence. Chore so so like a, so with this like a just uh, the the whole this the text uh, for 400 verses on the middle way by uh, with the text uh, particularly the first chapter the the first chapter the whole first chapter talks about impermanence and so since the whole first chapter talks about impermanence uh, 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 I would like to just remind all of you that not only this text, also uh, many uh, Buddhist texts uh, speak a uh, whole volume, whole volume on the impermanence. Now, like I uh, just, I like to remind to to all of you that when the the teaching talks about the impermanence, it's not scaring the practitioner, rather the reminding us the very nature of our existence, which is transitory in nature, which is impermanent in nature. So therefore, it is very important the moment we think about impermanence, it's a reminder for us to truly utilize our existence and to engage in the spiritual practice that we have that we have to take from the uh, yeah, impermanence. Mm -hmm. Adi, so like uh so once again the uh, edges uh, uh motivation in a more altruistic manner to listen to this uh, teaching and I will do my best to finish the first chapter today. Right? We are on uh, verses twenty, right? Sholo <laughs> So uh, the verse 20 talks about, now in general speaking, uh, when the meeting with our loved ones, it brings a happiness, a joy, meeting with our loved ones. And the parting with our loved ones brings a sorrow, unpleasantness. Mm -hmm. Uh, like so by knowing that uh, meeting is the cause for happiness like uh, for example meeting with the loved one brings the happiness so therefore if one thinks that oh uh, so meeting so if I attach to the meeting because it brings the uh, happiness mm -hmm. Uh, 
so like um uh, okay so if one thinks that okay just um uh, uh, having uh attach uh, or anticipating to the uh, meeting because it brings uh, uh joyful moments meeting with the loved ones or not just anticipating but also craving for that uh to that meetings and a uh, 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 part of uh, 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 angry or dis dis uh, dis uh, dissatisfaction or more like a uh, more uh, uh, un unpleasantness for a partnering with uh, uh, loved ones. So so one should like a uh, uh, neither one should develop a craving or attach uh, to the meeting nor discontent with the. Uh, a parting after all both meeting and parting are the part of uh impermanence mm -hmm. <laughs> Do So the very moment of meeting it begins the uh a party. Uh so so that's the law of nature. Like just uh the, the very moment of meeting begins with a parting. Uh, since it's the law of nature, there's no point of being uh, uh, happy or unhappy. Mm. <laughs> Ah, so like so if then the author uh, author speaks about if a person thinks that actually actual time for meeting is longer than the uh, uh party so therefore i can tolerate partying because i know that the time for meeting will be a uh, longer mm -hmm. So the then author like uh, just uh it talks about like this ask the question to that person who thinks can tolerate the uh, party because the meeting will be longer. Then uh, it's a concept here. Uh, author's reason is quite a uh, 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 tough uh, uh, because he's, he's he speaks about since the past is the beginningless, limitless. Moreover, future is also a limitless. Uh, how how can how can you say that the present? Uh, he's content with the present. How, how how you can measure the presence? Hmm. How into Jana? Jawa Jawa Nama la Thama Meba Dana. Jawa Chima la Thama Meba Dala Jana. Jawa Di Tu Tu Pe Tung Tung Doa. Na Di Chim Dang Dung Dung Chine Dege Na Ra Yin Tu Dung Dung Chine Dege Tu Tu Tung Tung Di Chu Kan Dis Chine Tu Tu Rung Guri Se Lap Tu Tu Wo Se Lap Tu. So all those speaking like a 
Speaking of the three times, past is uh, immeasurables. Future is also immeasurables. Relatively with the past and the future, present moment is very short, very instinct. And then all the saying that, how can you say the present is okay because present is very long? So that's the essence of the uh, uh, stanza 21. So then the, if then the 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 the, the, the uh, if a person thinks that now speaking of a time like a uh but time is uh can be divided into four seasons uh right four seasons and then uh I don't like uh, winter I like spring and summer and actually in reality speaking of time there are some bad times by default setting it's cold and just right cold and windy and I don't like those but this is a default I didn't make it up uh, whereas a spring brings a joy and summer and all those are like therefore winter is a short based on the spring and the summer and of course I like the, the one that I like the season is a longer than the uh, one that is dislike is a shorter. Then others, uh, all he other is reasoning that like a, so even such way of thinking is actually it's a uh, it's not a healthy because uh despite the four seasons so every season is actually subject to momentarily changing so the one season follows with the next in in other words we are more closer to the dead and there's still not time for celebrations Any <laughs> So then the next uh, next gang, then, gang, gang, the gang song they are made up of those who jump in Kanga, some of them are and they are the ones that do good songs. So the next stanza, the other is trying to underline the his uh, the the other is trying to underscore the very essence of the all the previous stanzas that he talked about the impermanence. After all, the other is trying to underscore the importance of reflection on impermanence which is which is utilizing a precious potential of this existence and through utilizing the precious potential of ex existence we we will generate a genuine sense of renunciation and being engaged in the pure dharma practice that's what others trying to underscore the present uh, underscore for presenting uh, all those uh, stanza for the uh, impermanence. So therefore, uh, for us, like uh, we must not bind by the only interest of this life. 
Rather, we have to be wise to utilize, put effort uh, on the spiritual practice as well, uh, besides uh, worldly uh, uh, activities. So the, uh, uh, in the wording, he talks about, or the talks about uh, the importance of uh, 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 getting uh, enrolled as uh, monastic members and then be uh, remain in the isolations retreat in the isolation but 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 for us but uh, it's important to truly develop uh, renunciations uh, and the purpose of ge uh, generating renunciation is to engage in a, a genuine dharma practice that's the true message from the authors and the but of the lesson she kebaji na rangi chasha de rangi so the author puts the example that the wise person uh wise person will do the action accordance with his or her will uh uh not because some are forced to do do the things to you or because of fear or punishment but rather the wise man takes his own action uh, 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 rather wise man takes the action uh, based on his own accord mm -hmm. Then the next uh, stanza talks about then if 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 a person a person thinks that okay after all now I, I understand the importance of doing dharma practice, but however first let me let me do other uh, worldly actions that I have committed. Let me finish those. Once all those are finished, then I will do the dharma practice. Tadi, chala kudo so then if if one thinks that then other is or other is other saying that like a, you have a very nice uh, uh nice clothes and you clean the cloak you you cleaned right and thinking that I'm going to use that wear this however after cleaning you just trash it that's the same way, just thinking procrastination on the Dharma practice. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the final stanza, conclusion stanza for the chapter one, author re-underlines the importance of being mindful about the transitory nature of our life. The moment, the, the more aware we are on the impermanence, the Lord of the death, the greater awareness we have as a reminder to implement our, uh, implement the actions, the virtuous actions, or to carry out the pure uh, Dharma actions. But in reality, there's no fear of thinking on that or impermanence. Rather, those awareness actually reinforce strength within ourselves to in, to implement uh, in, in virtuous deed. Uh, 
、NH 中和液、カルスコレ、ゲバリチワタン、ナムチゲバンダバタン、チュウエテチュウカンギ、チュウマトカンギジャンメトバタンゾレ、ネシェニベコネ、エネミセディ、ランドンテンバチチュウ。Now, the very gist on the first chapter, the author really、uh, speaks on the, the important, importance of cultivating awareness or impermanence. Instead of querying or, or denying or not talking about、uh, the death, because it's,、uh, like a, uh, rather it's Unhealthy not to talk about that because, after all, there's a natural process. Whether we like it or not, it will come because that is certain. We all know that. Since when time is uncertain, right, there's more reason for us to do the Dhamma practice. If we keep procrastination, we don't know. right? And on top of that, When the actual death comes, the only Dhamma practice is going to help us. Therefore, we must truly reinforce our dedication to our Dhamma practice. And this dedication and reinforcement comes through the cultivation of awareness to impermanence. Therefore, this chapter really, author is trying to reinforce, to remind that not to waste this precious human body. Which has immense potentials, right? And how we are not going to waste is, is through cultivation, utilizing this precious human body to engage in the two Dhamma of practice.、Mm -hmm. And that is the two、uh, gist of on the、uh, first chapter, which、mm -hmm. is on impermanence. That's why I'm talking about any Pemasu or Techim Boris and the Jesuit Mujay Villa, Shologaji, Dutiki Sunshed. ニグステレチョマチュチチンエンバドラツンベコマチョチワチワサンバディギエニニゴラセベエニチャバディエニチョバチギリエニラニエニチョシャマジチェアレアネコマチギリディエニソンラカンガギソンラコンジサンウェタ
今天我们来到这里,我们来到这里,我们来到这里,我们来到这里,我们来到这里,我们来到这里,我们来到这里,我们来到这里,我们来到这里,我们来到这里,我们来到这里,我们来到这里,我们来到这里,我们来到这里,
uh, it's it's very helpful to read the uh, Buddhist uh, logics and to read the there's a text logic there's a Buddhist uh, the logics and the, the the reasonings the text and the logic 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 Mind, uh, mind and mental functions. Uh, so there's a text uh, on the Buddhist logics and mind, uh, mind and uh, uh, mental factors. There's also text you can, uh, and particularly also the Buddhist tenets, the the Buddhist tenets. So the three texts that uh, refer as a basis for us to understand better for this uh, classical text. So since uh, I'm sure all of you like reading the text. So you should try, if you if time permits, read those texts as a basis. And if you don't understand uh, anything, if you have questions while reading, make a note, you can ask someone or next time you can ask also Rinpoche about those points that you don't understand on those uh, 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 texts. And those I can consider as a uh, very important uh, supplementary you, you use as a, a foundation text in monastery even before we read on the study on the classical text. Mm. So when whenever we uh, study Buddhist or practice Buddhist, it's always uh, related to the mind and some kind of consciousness, right? So if we have a background understanding of the, those uh, mind and mental factors, when we talk talk about uh, all the positive uh, consciousness or all the kind of like delusions of those consciousness, all uh, is already in the, the mind and mental factors, the test that they categorize um, how the, the, how to say, mind uh, uh, works or the, the, how to say, system. So if you have a basic uh, understanding of those and then when you, uh, your practice or you study or you, receive the teaching or discussion about uh, any topic or any subject uh, from the uh, Buddhist text, uh, you will have a better understand. <laughs> That's I want to recommend it to you. In, in our monastery, we study for around 18, 20 years. And the beginning, we started from the, the, uh, the how to call the mind and mental factor and also logic and also tenets, those old tests we memorized. And they, 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 they do have a, a, how to say, example like that, the, uh, we say that they have a six uh, principle consciousness. And each consciousness, they have a, also subcategorized and also definition or something like that. We all memorize when we are very young. <laughs> so, and then something, when we debate about something mental consciousness, then, then we already have a definition of the mental consciousness. Okay, oh no, no, this is not mental consciousness because it's not something uh, the how to say purely in uh, definition is not there or something like that. So that's how uh, when we talk about uh, meditations or any any practice in the Buddhist, they always related to the. Uh, the mind or consciousness or something, it's not uh, not that much rele relevant to the outer things. Uh, when, the, when we talk about the practice, it's uh, always talking about the inner uh, things. So like a mind or something, like, even we talk about, the, it's very well known about the emptiness, right? Everybody heard about the emptiness. It's generally speaking, emptiness, we can talk about the, some outside uh, the outside object or those things it, it makes sense, but reality, when we do the practice, we should focus on our minds uh, empty of inherent existence, not the just something else. So when we talk about the emptiness, we, when we need to realize or the, uh, recognize uh, the, something that's uh, truly not uh, existent or something that we have to realize on our mind. So that's uh, always uh, case in practice or study or something uh, within the Buddhist uh, test, uh, Buddhist philosophy. So that's uh, our recommended view. And also I will thank everybody and uh, special uh, Lama Lats and 
uh, not only the, this event, but you know, the many, many years, uh, Lama Lao uh, tried very hard to organize the centers and a lot of people involved, people who work, people who donate, people who support. So everybody, I uh, want to say thank you. It's not easy to do uh, Dharma practice or uh, the study or something by individual. So if, if we need to have a, some kind of uh, center like this. So, so I, I want to thank Sri Lamala and also everybody. So and the great, uh, how we say, place that we can uh, gather and discuss and practice and uh, that's uh, uh, how to say, uh, very, very um, precious deed we uh, created. So it's uh, help for many people and also help for all the other other beings. So that's uh, that's uh, how to end my talk today. Okay. Yeah, we can have a question or answer times if people have a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'll say a few things. First, a question that um, uh, very precious teaching to have um, uh, completely classical teaching that has uh, gone on for thousands of years, transmitted orally from master to master. And we have the opportunity, precious opportunity today. So um, fortunately, um, the verses uh, are many. So um, our Rim Shea has uh, offered to uh, continue to come back and, mm -hmm. and teach. Um, I particularly enjoy having very classical teachings from, um, uh, you know, in the tradition of Nagarjuna, Vayadeva, uh, Shanti Deva, Chandra Kirti, Buddha Palita, so forth. Um, some people here are fortunate enough to make the time to um, be in the Buddha Dharma study program and uh, read the classical texts. So, um, you know, uh, what we're talking about when we're talking about Dignaga and Dharma Kirti and uh, Lodrig and Abhidharma Kosha, things like that. Um, these are not abstract text, but these are um, uh, texts that point directly to our, our liberation. So um, a great honor to have a master teaching us today. So um, this is giving you time to formulate your questions, which will be very, uh, very practical also. So I, I know you join me in, in wishing Rinpoche to come back after uh, he'll be going to India at some point soon. And uh, come back and continue. Mongolia, teaching. Mongolia. Oh, Mongolia. Sorry, okay. not India. Mongolia, <laughs> going to Kalachakra. <laughs> Thank you. So um, maybe uh, depends on you. The questions online or in the compa. Thank you. You mentioned that while we have to be a part of the world and get, get an income and stay alive in this world, uh, we also renunciate. Mm -hmm. What does that look like, renunciating while still being in the world? Yeah. So, that is in the lamna I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if so, like, is the question like so I said that repeat the first part of your question that we have to go to work, oh, so you're income, speaking like stay a alive, right? In general, right? Right, okay. but at the same time, we have to renunciate. Okay, okay, so what does it look like to be in the world and renunciate? Okay. <laughs> Madina 
Ninjung Chevatan, and it said Mitidic Chasani, the Gendu da which I hope to Tana Gendu do the Tongudua, and renounce the Chevro to the Pura by Pangi Ubo there, do the Tongudua, the tender on Chegu is the Maris. Go so Missig saw Jaguet, saw a digital temper Jaguagi, and it Chasha, and it go just on the Tumba, Yarab the Tumba, Sudan Tumba, Chick Tum the Tumba to the Che Yorwa, Dikanga Mutinichi. In a D, Che, D, Nigi, Hartu de Jedi Karsukuta, Sadu Nidi, Pugi, Kalota, Hobja Tatu Badi, somebody, some lot of Tanji, Ching, Chesu Chevo Major and Jerry, D, then the Dirty, D means, then the Dirty, Dwedi, Nalian, Nigi, Militi, and Dwegi, Alacoco, you intended to cheer you, and that. So, yeah, so uh, how it like, right? How it looks like? Your question is sweet and sour. So, <laughs> so here, Rumpuche is saying here, it's uh, when we speak of renunciation, right? So, we shouldn't misunderstood that renunciation doesn't mean give up on everything that's the first uh, point of clarification and second thing here uh Rinpoche also is uh, stress stressing on the importance of uh, in this time of age it's important being wise being smart ourselves as a practitioner because at the end of the day i mean we cannot deny the fact that we have a life right one way or other since we have a life one way or other, why not use it in a proper way? Not just confine the interests of this life. Since we have this awareness far bigger than this ordinary existence, there's a spiritual world, right? And be smart about, like I earlier we talked about, deposing the interest money in this spiritual bank. Not to just think about, only to think about, since we have a life, yes, but the working on this life is not an ultimate goal. That's not the end of my life. Otherwise, it's so it's not much meaning just to just to live for only this life. Rather, pushing a horizon, thinking far beyond just to this life, which is the complete enlightenment. So, therefore, balancing. Yes, you have since we have a life, we have some commitments we have to fulfill but this is not your ultimate goal that's right you need to fulfill that's why we need to balance do this life but it's not your ultimate goal but since this is not ultimate goal but don't be careless be your best even in this life to fulfill the service for yourself and for your loved ones for your communities but at the same time, do the proper spiritual practice for the sake of for the mankind. Yeah, in some cases, you know that we we call the what you call the hamid person, right? Hamid person, people who who go person who go to uh, mountains. mountains or something like that. So it's, hamidis. Yeah, hamidis. It's not impossible. Everybody can do that, and even some people they can go to the mountains. It's not. It's not hundred percent sure that the that 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 path is the right path. So it's a, the all this the our the spiritual practice it come within our mind. It's not the, how it looks. So someone who may be in the mountain, maybe not uh, <laughs> not uh, not uh, how to say get the the uh, how to say. Uh, actual uh, renunciation and someone who live in the big city he might be already have a very very uh, how to call pure uh, renunciation so it is uh, up to individuals and in reality we cannot do like a ham how do you say hamid hamidage hamidage is reality even even the, all the monks can do it <laughs> they cannot do it <laughs> And they, they, in in ancient times, and from India, from Tibet, uh, many parts, they, 
they do have many uh, those uh, historic like a Malarepa or something like that. It makes sense. I I, I felt that makes sense because when it's it's big different from when I live in a monastery and when I live with my family, it's a big different for the how to say environment. So, you know, church here, the some of the cool pay effect do though. Yeah, so like uh, environments or the condition creates a big Im impact on a spiritual practice. Yeah. So that then I, I thought, okay, those uh, uh, some like a, a real practitioner who want to go to the, uh, how to call the mountain, the something to go. Since Rinpoche has first-hand experience that when he was living with the family, and that condition also not very conducive for him, particularly him. It's not very conducive for spiritual practice. Therefore, Rinpoche thought of like, a, yeah, it makes sense for Meladaba why he goes to the very isolated place, place there's no like other human beings to to solve, uh, to remain in uh, uh, isolation place. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. And I also learned many things since I live in the United States. Uh, my whole life live in always with a community like a big gathering, always in the uh, monastery. So when I live in the United States, then I learn many things uh, from the family, friends, those things. That's the good the good things uh, I able to learn. So otherwise, uh, many, how to say, monks are not, uh, able to get that, that chance too. So the way they do, the way they, uh, people think so those uh, monks and lama must know. Otherwise, uh, you know, the things similar to the monastic lives is not a reality. <laughs> so it sounds like you're saying there's spiritual lessons to be learned in the world. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rinpoche, for your teaching. As we focus on impermanence to remind ourselves to turn our minds to the Dharma, how important is it that we also work to turn others' minds to the Dharma? And if so, what are the best ways to do that? Yeah, and and general, general, I I I talk, I tell the people many, uh, many occasions when we talk about the Dharma practice or something that something that we should some good things or something like that, and when we discuss many cases, this and uh, I'm not sure that they all the uh, the how to say. Like a Western people, they uh, thought about in many cases. Like a, uh, when I talk with uh, some of my family member, friend, or uh, always they pointing out somebody else, something that we should do, something something good, something that they think, oh, nobody's not, uh, nobody's doing that, and <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so, so generally, I'm saying like it's. Uh, real uh, the dharma practice is other people's not business at all i'm i'm thinking that you know it's something you example like a bodhicitta right altruism mind right then think about oh uh, there are a lot of people not thinking that way or something it doesn't doesn't make sense for our practice and i'm sometimes i'm saying like uh, okay we have a uh, like a hundred people if 99 people steal something, then that one person should steal or not steal? I, I think still don't, don't steal. Even though all the 99 people against you, not, the, you, you, should, you should keep your morality as 
it can be, right? So similar like that, all the other practice too. Then his question uh, about uh, the, uh, the, that we have, to, uh, we have to know a little bit something about some other people's uh, so, so since uh, every person's uh, disposition and mental inclinations are different, before we uh, pointing something like before we saying something, all right, uh, or or guiding that person in the spiritual practice, it's important to bit understands that that disposition, the background of that person's. Yeah, if other persons are not capable of something like about talk about the emptiness or that or something that that's not right how to say right person or right time or something like that even buddha you know the in buddha, the buddha one time he said uh, uh how to say so like a, um, yeah so like a, uh, uh, but Buddha at one time he literally he said that father and mothers are to be killed. Yeah, that uh, that is a general is not right. It's generalist so since Buddha literally he said father and mothers to be killed, therefore if the student literally took his meaning, then then that will lead to the big trouble time, right? <laughs> and Buddha is he's not he doesn't mean like a he, he means differently. So therefore, what is Rumbus is trying to say here is like it's really important to understand the uh for example, Rumbus also says that like a, a concept of impermanence, emptiness is a very convoluted, very, very vague. And if the if a person is not a right state of mind, uh, not in a, it's not a good, uh, it's not a conducive to receive such a teaching. They instead of helping, we are, we put in, that person in danger. Uh, could be get in a total mis different directions. So therefore, I'm just trying to say here is like it's before we trying. Uh, we have good intentions to help that persons to right, but. But in, uh, it's important to understand, to know a little bit more about the person before we point to the Dhamma practice. So the best way to help is to putting the Dhamma practice by ourselves, doing the action speaks louder than the words, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe one more question. So this is partially informed. So I noticed in those prayers, um, I noticed with the prayers, it kind of went back and forth between like affirmation and negation, but kind of brought you to center in that way. And you talked a lot about um, impermanence in your talk, but I was wondering if like permanence in itself is a sense of attachment or if there are certain attachments that are actually like positive. Can you please repeat again? Um, yeah, so I noticed in the prayers, like it kind of goes back and forth between like affirmation and negation. Um, but in that way, it kind of brings you to like this center point. Um, and so in his talk, he talked a lot about like impermanence, but I was wondering if like a sense of permanence is a form of attachment or like that seeking of something permanent, um, or if there are certain attachments that like would be positive, more acceptable, if that makes sense. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
so so okay so so now we're trying to begin a little, little bit more or less to a little technical now here <laughs> so yeah, sometimes we use term very loosely right attachments so we i'm also using a loose term like thinking with attach when i say attach that i'm connotation is a bad attachment refers to lustful or craving now, when we technical term, when we use attachment in the classical text, it can be positive, positive, it has a positive connotation. For examples, Buddha attached to the sentient beings. Here it has a positive connotation. It doesn't mean last form. <clears throat> yeah. Um, should you dedication? Do you have anything else? After dedication, we have an opportunity for cotton mm -hmm. line, please. Mm -hmm. um, it's a wonderful opportunity to um, make an offering um, to a master. Um, it sounds uh, kind of mythological, but um, as Rimshi has pointed out many times, there there are future lives, and you know myself, I like to make aspiration, um, you know, through uh, an offering to to meet again with Rim Shea in future lives, you know, so we can continue to meet, you know, that's very powerful because my my future life maybe isn't too far away. <laughs> like that. So right after dedication, people can come up and we can have a cut to line, okay? Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may quickly attain a state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the Supreme Jewel Bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow. May that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezi, Tenzin Jato, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. May the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Losong, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones. Merciful giver, a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of optimist compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Songkapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losantapa, I make request at your holy feet. Gong Chen Ke Pe Su Jen Song Kapa Lo Song Dra Pe Jab La Su Wadab There are katas in red envelopes at the back that uh, the gompa if you want them. Mig Me Se We Te Chen Chen Re Zi
Oh. Uh-huh. 